G'day, I'm Alistair Christie and I run the LearnDelphi.tv website where I have a large number of video tutorials on Delphi, some free, some commercial, and I've been running it for a number of years. Unfortunately, I need to make a confession. Uh, I may have mentioned something about pterodactyls in the abstract for this talk, but they don't actually feature, not one. Only the very tenuous link that lots of nested try finally statements looks messy and playing on the word nest, bird nest, pterodactyl nest, well, enough said, on with my presentation. I have here sort of a demo application, which is going to be the sort of structure of my, my talk. Um, and what we're going to be looking at is uh, eliminating these try finally uh, nesting arrangements, which are quite typical in uh, Delphi code. Now, uh, I'm using this little test object, and if I control click on that, uh, we'll see that it has a private info, which basically gets set in the constructor, and in the destructor it just calls show message. So if we run our application and go try finally, uh, three, two, one, all of the um, uh, all of our test objects get freed. So our first mechanism for uh, removing these try finally statements is basically we're going to uh, store, have a list of the objects and free them all at once when we're done. So I'll create a new unit and I'll call it do finally and we'll create a new class. Um, do finally and it's a class and we'll have a private section and a public section. Now um, we're storing a list of objects and uh, there is quite a nice uh, useful class for that called T object list um, and it's in some containers I think yep uh, so um, let's call the free list now of course we'll need to uh, create that and destroy it destroy and override Now the nice thing about the object list is by default uh, when it's freed uh, it will automatically free all the objects that um, it contains and there's a parameter um, which is owns object which I think I'm pretty sure defaults to true. But we'll um, uh, explicitly set it uh, just to indicate that's what we intended. Um, and we probably want uh, one method on that. Um, so oh. add our object. So we can now um, rewrite our uh, try finally. So first of all we will want to uh, use the unit of which we have one and we will create our first first uh, do finally um, first iteration of it. So um, what we want to do now is create uh, and we can get rid of all 
the rest of this. And of course we want to and just a bit of a copy and paste. And finally So um, we've reduced our, the amount of code quite a lot. Uh, our classes will still get freed even uh, if there's an exception raised. Uh, we can run that. And three, two, one. And it works uh, just as before. Now, we can actually uh, get rid of this free here uh, completely. Uh, if we make t do finally instead of a uh, object, we can make it an interface. Um, so, well, I suppose uh, that instance of it there. So, um, let's take all this code and paste it into our using interface and we'll uh, eliminate a little bit more. So we go back to our do finally and create an I uh, actually I'm going to be pedantic, I prefer the uh, lowercase version um, and uh, we could put a good in there just for uh, completeness and we want this procedure as being our public interface oh, slightly too much there and we can say that uh, instead of just being inheriting from t object inherit from t interface to object and I do finally Okay, verify that compiles. Cool. And we can go back to our version of using interface and rather than saying T do finally, say I do finally and get rid of that and those. So our code is looking um, a little bit shorter. So compare that with our uh, original. Um, this is uh, somewhat easier to to follow, and we should verify that it does in fact work. And if you're um, not using interfaces as yet, it's it's well well, well worth uh, learning about them. Um, basically, interfaces get freed whenever they uh, go out of scope. Uh, or their, their reference count reaches zero, more technically speaking. And, um, so when the uh, procedure ends, uh, the interface, the contents of the interface is freed, which is our t do finally, and all our um, objects get freed at the same time. So let's continue to uh, reduce the amount of code that's required. I take that lot and check it there. And uh, our next step is I'm going to make this return the object that we created. So um, let's replace that one. returning the uh, the object that was created uh, and that allows us to cut down on some of our code so rather than going uh, we can say t1 is assigned 
and then throw <laughs> throw the correct code into there. So um, I'll just be lazy. Two, three. So now we're uh, creating the objects, they get returned uh, by the add method and uh, assigned to our local variable. And of course, as always, um, we have lots of code in here. Uh, that we'll be doing, you know, all our interactions between our objects and things like that. And I don't need that one anymore. Um, this won't compile for the simple reason that test object and object are not the same. So That, one's, that of course is not needed. So um, we're slowly whittling down the amount of code required to manage our uh, object lifecycle and we'll just run that and confirm that it still works. So three, two, one, all get created and freed uh, as we, you know, how, how we uh, expect them to. So our uh, next step is to eliminate one additional line of code and to do that we'll uh, start with the previous example and we're going to eliminate this uh, t to finally create. Now uh, what I'm going to do is uh, be a little bit lazy uh, I could throw this in its own unit but um, in fact let's do that I'm just going to have a function called guard which takes an object and an i oops getting ahead of myself and returns a t object Now I've made an interesting uh, mistake here, but we'll get to that shortly. So what we want to do is if assigned df, then uh, actually if not, we wish to create our uh, do finally t do finally object, uh, and then. add our object and we come back to our guard function and we're going to eliminate that and throw the guard function and we also need to pass in our do finally object or interface and we run this and click our guard function and you'll notice it goes one two three as opposed to three two one now um, the reason for that is we need to make this a var parameter, um, which um, because <laughs> effectively we uh, are assigning something to it, and it, it um, the reference count reaches zero when we exit, and um, yeah, it, <laughs> it automatically frees for each one straight away, um, which is not what we are uh, wanting. So. Our guard function now three two one.
and we're now down to uh, not very many lines of code. We are, however, still doing uh, this as operation, uh, which we can actually get rid of. Our last step with respect to classes is I want to eliminate this uh, as t test object from the end. Now we can do that by using generics, I have make guard a generic function, but um, generic functions can't, you can't have a global generic generic function. It has to be a method on a class. So I'm just going to add uh, a method to our class, um, and rather than doing objects, t objects, I'm just going to do t's. Uh, and we also, so there's our generic function of type t. Uh, it takes a, an O of type t and returns a, a t. Uh, but I'm just going to also make that a class because we want them to be able uh, only be objects or descend from t object. And I'll Control Shift C on that, and our code is going to look remarkably similar to our original guard, uh, with one exception. We need to go as t because um, we're returning a t, not a t object. And if we come back to here and copy and paste that to our last button. Oh, and I need to do one more thing. Um, we don't need to do it, but I make that a class function. Oops. Uh, and let's just copy that. And we no longer need that bit on the end. And that's our um, simplification uh, pretty much done. So run that and confirm that it does indeed work. So you might be asking the question at this point, um, does this actually work? And in, indeed it does. Um, if I raise an exception here, and that exception is perfectly fine, uh, t1 and 2 will get created. We raise our exception. Uh, t3 is not, this, this, but this line of code is never going to be, get reached. And uh, if everything's working correctly, uh, two will get freed, and then one will get freed. So there's our error message. Uh, two's getting freed, one's getting freed, and then the user gets to see the error message. So indeed, uh, it is behaving uh, as we would like. So it's not always the case that you're wanting to uh, free things from memory. Uh, in this case, in our try finally, we're wanting to uh, close a file, so doing an assigned file. Um, and if we run that to demonstrate how that works, not very exciting. Um, it's just showing an XML file I, I used an example in one of my other videos. So. Um, can we get rid of this try finally? Um, I'm showing you this obviously because uh, we can. Um, and if we go over to our do finally, what we can do is add another method uh, add, which doesn't return anything. Um, and it takes a parameter, but we'll get to that shortly. And need to say overload and um, ideal and ideal candidate is of course anonymous methods so I'm 
I'm just going to pass in a tproc, and tproc is defined in sysutils, and tproc is just a uh, definition for an anonymous method. So there's a bunch of uh, default ones preset up using generics for uh, additional parameters should you need them. So uh, we need to somehow uh, <laughs> call this anonymous method um, when you know in, in correspondence with our freeing of objects. Now the the way I came up with it to do this uh, is to have a new type, and we call it t t do finally run or something similar. And in we'll have a private member, um, which is a proc of type t proc. Um, So we'll have a constructor that takes a tproc as a parameter and a destructor destroy and he's called override. There we go. Oops. Self dot proc and in our destructor we just call it. So in our uh, do finally add, we just call add and pass in an object. Uh, so we have our t t do finally run dot create and pass in our anonymous method. So fairly straightforward. Now before I forget, um, we need to update our interface. overload onto the end of that. So I'll just verify that all compiles and it does indeed. And uh, if you pardon the Yoda reference, um, we can do our assign file and uh, we'll use our, our old mechanism In an anonymous method, and I'll do this on multiple lines. And of course, we can get rid of our try, finally, and close file. And um, of course, uh, if you uh, really want to, you can be a little bit masochistic and throw all of this on one line. And, and close. Okay. So if we run that, and well, we probably need to <laughs> indicate this is actually being called. Um, and we'll make our one-liner uh, even more <laughs> more convoluted. And we should get a closed. And you can uh, mix and match, of course, and probably extend the uh, 
the guard function uh, class function here to um, uh, be able to pass in a procedure but um, you can, I, I will leave that as an exercise to the viewer um, so that's handling um, things other than pretty much anything else other than your um, uh, freeing objects and you could free objects that way as well but it'll be a bit, uh, bit of an odd way of doing it now I should also point out that there are other mechanisms for uh, reducing our try finally statements um, one common one is we have one try finally for multiple um, things that we've created so we create our t1, 2 and 3 Uh, and have one finally, and if I tidy that up a little bit, and we just get all the indentation nice and neat. Uh, but what we do need to do is assign t1 nil, t2 nil, and T3 nil. Uh, and um, this now works uh, pretty well. Uh, there, there is, you could argue that there, there might be an issue if a, an exception occurs in one of these destructors, but um, if you've got errors occurring in destructors, then you've got um, generally bigger problems. So um, we can verify that this does indeed work, and uh, you might, might think that. Um, for instance, let's throw an exception in here. Uh, you might think at this point, well, T3 is being freed, um, and that might cause us a problem because it's going to be nil. Uh, but if, of course, um, we see that if it is nil, um, nothing's going to happen because we uh, we the the free uh, checks it. So, and we can verify that if we run this, we get our error message, but two gets freed, one gets freed, and the user sees the error message, um, and three, nothing happens. I'll just mention one more mechanism for eliminating your try finally statements, uh, and that is using smart pointers. If we go to this website, uh, it's a post on the uh, ADUG um, site and it's on smart pointers and there's an implementation of on using smart pointers and their usages. Now I'll flip over to this version of, of Delphi. We see I've got, I've got the, uh, that same implementation here and uh, here is um, a usage of it. And if we had uh, a default constructor this would be a little bit shorter, but um, that works fine. And we can run it. And indeed things get freed and we can throw our exception in as well. And I'll run it without debugging this time. So we get Two, one, both freed. Our error message three never got created. Just very briefly, uh, let's talk about a mobile application. So I have a uh, created a Android mobile app, and as you may be aware, that uh, objects are reference counted, and so they get freed automatically, uh, very similarly to interfaces. So under mobile, we can actually just set a bunch of code and get rid of all of that. format that and run it. So we can now swap over to the webcam and here we have our application. Click on the button and one, two and three. So they're freed in the reverse order to what they were previously but they are being freed without uh, any effort on our part.
Thanks for watching my talk. I'm Alistair Christie from LearnDelphi.tv.